I wanted to make a copy of this hat, but I needed some scaffolding. I was a good sewer, but I needed somebody to show me the skills for a hat. A hat is basically applied geometry. You have shapes that you cut the shapes out in different fabrics. You sew them together. And how you sew them together determines the style and shape of what you get. This hat is made very similarly to this hat. And you can see that the hat on the right, the one that I made, looks like a flat little toadstool compared to the original. Well, Stella was going to help me with my problems. There's her house on the prairie, and there's all the horses looking at my car like they are going to eat it because my car has flowers on it. Stella Guerrero learned how to sew from her mother, who was a dressmaker. Stella started off by playing with all the bits and pieces, making her little pretend store, but soon she was sewing with needle and thread, and then her mother was teaching her how to use the machine. She was in the zone of proximal development every day as she learned how to sew with her mother. Stella got her first job at Santone Industries, where they manufactured clothes for juveniles. Those machines are big industrial sewing machines, and Stella wanted to know how to use them. But they said that Stella was too small to work those big machines, so they put her in payroll, which Stella did not like at all. But Stella was soon able to adjust her work environment to fit her needs by being such a snappy dresser. People started noticing her great outfits, and when she said that she'd made them, pretty soon they were hiring her to sew for them. She did alterations and made outfits. She did everything that was asked, but Stella didn't know how to price her work. She went to a local fabric store and looked at their samples and asked what they charged. Now she knew. When Santone Industries closed, Stella got a job at the Minger Smart Shop, and soon she was the head of their alterations and sewing department. Stella says that at this time she was a very timid and, timid and sensitive young woman, yet she had the confidence to do all of the sewing and alterations that were asked of her at the Minger Smart Shop. In fact, the managers at Minger always had her do the work on the most expensive pieces and the most difficult alterations. When Saks Fifth Avenue opened a sh shop in San Antonio, Stella was there applying for a position in their alterations department. She says, I went to the Holiday Inn for an interview for manager. They called me back the very next day and offered me the job. I was bilingual and I was a teacher. I could sew and had teaching experience. I had a little education. These are the barest facts of Stella's, Stella's skills. As she began to work at Saks Fifth Avenue, Stella faced another challenge. She needed to learn to set limits on the amount of work she would do, and she needed to set limits to her hours and availability. She was doing the work of two people. Vygotsky focused on the mechanisms of change. For Vygotsky, development follows a dialectical process of thesis. One idea in the conflict, such as Stella's enthusiasm for her job and inexperience in limit setting, and antithesis, the opposing idea, the work that the Saks Fifth Avenue wanted her to do, and synthesis, effectively setting limits and Stella hiring another person so she no longer did the work of two. The synthesis represents a higher level of cognition null function means. Conflict and resolution play a major role in development in children and people across the lifespan. In Vygotsky's view, development is both quantitative and qualitative, with periods of calm alternating with periods of crisis. In dialectical process, two elements may develop in a quantitative way, but as a result of synthesis, a qualitative new form emerges. Stella internalized the mode of problem solving that was first supported socially in her family and in her high school home economics class. As Vygotsky expresses it, children grow into the intellectual life of those around them. At Saks Fifth Avenue, Stella was being challenged at the very limits of her skill. She was working with expensive clothes and demanding customers. 
as well as teaching her new hires how to complete work on time without ruining the fabric. Stella came to appreciate that her skills were very good, and she learned that she enjoyed teaching. The qualitative change Stella made at this time resulted in a change from her spontaneous understanding of what was demanded of her as a manager to a more logically defined concept. The socioculturalist would be interested in the process by which Stella co-constructed her development with the information her husband and Mrs. Naylor gave her about how much work was reasonable for the job. Vygotsky describes how we use language as well as society, society to learn. Stella was actively internalizing social, verbal, and nonverbal interactions. Then she would mentally interact with herself as she had earlier with other people. Learning to have a conversation with someone else leads to the ability to talk mentally to oneself when working through a problem. As she used language to rehearse the new information of setting new limits on her work hours, Stella used the language of her husband Larry and her best customer Mrs. Naylor to rehearse her new cultural expectations. Vygotsky and the other Soviet theorists claimed that we master ourselves from the outside through the use of tools, both psychological and technical. The technical tool is oriented toward changing objects. The use of dressmaking and other sewing skills involves its own cognitive skill. The cultural tool of sewing expertise connected Stella with the physical and social world. The culture creates the tools to help people master the environment, and in turn, the tools shape the children's minds. To this day, Stella finds herself thinking of sewing and creating garments and doing alterations for people as an essential part of her thinking and doing. She thinks about her ongoing projects and uses her projects as a social avenue.